Hello, my name is Paul Friedman. I'm chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at Mayo Clinic. I'm delighted to have with me my colleague, Dr. Stephen Kopetsky, who has transformed his career from taking care of heart disease invasively to preventing it as a preventive cardiologist. He's a professor of medicine and has recently authored Live Younger Longer, describing how we can uh, use our lifestyles to prevent heart disease. Steve, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Paul. So uh, I'd like to talk today about a study on the effects of a low carbohydrate diet on insulin resistant dyslipoproteinemia. Uh, there was a recent randomized controlled trial. What were the goals of study and why was the study important? Well, you know, the study is important, Paul, because there's a lot of interest, as you know, in low carb, high carb diets, you know, talking about macronutrients. And it's interesting because, you know, as humans, we have eaten about 50 to 55% of our calories as carbohydrates over the last few hundred thousand years. That's what our species does. In fact, if you look at Lancet a few years ago, they said the Samani Indians in the Bolivian rainforest who had the healthiest hearts in the world, as judged by CT scans, eat about 72% of their calories as carbohydrates. But again, these are very complex carbohydrates. What we eat in our country now, unfortunately, with the pandemic, we're up to a lot of ultra processed foods, which is a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of fat. So about 57% of our calories every day is now an ultra processed food. The average American eats about seven and a half servings a day. Hmm. So they tried to do, I think it's a very good study. They, it was a feeding study, meaning they gave the participants the food. So they ate what they gave them over about, uh, four, over about 20 weeks, four or five months. And they looked at the effects on cholesterols, lipids, cholesterol size, cholesterol particle counts, chronic inflammation, and blood pressure. And that was really the goal. And what they gave them was three diets randomized. After they had a lower calorie diet for a couple of months, they lost about 12, 15% of their weight. They put them on either a high carb diet, which was 60% carbs. Uh, everybody had about 20% protein but they had 60% carbs and about 20% fat. And then the high fat diet was about 60% fat and 20% carbs. Again, they had about 20% protein. Hmm. So with these three very different diets, what was the effect on total cholesterol, LDL, and uh, measures of inflammation and other risk markers? Yeah, it was quite interesting. And so the, if you look at the lipids, you know, the things we always care about, the, uh, the you know, triglycerides went down a little more with the higher fat diet. The, uh, the HDL went up a little bit more. The LDL didn't really change in either group. But if you look at blood pressure, the blood pressure did better in the higher fat group. The CRP went down more in the higher fat group. And then the lipoprotein A actually, and this was somewhat surprising, the lipoprotein A actually went down a little more in the high fat group. Now, I thought lipoprotein A was impervious to lifestyle changes. Tell me about that. Is this, this an important finding? Well, this, this needs to be replicated because most studies have not shown this. In fact, the recent guidelines came out and said, uh, guidelines said, you know, diet doesn't really matter for lipoprotein A. So we need to look at this further, I think. And, and the diet uh, that they used was, was fairly unique and, and uh, a very good diet, I think. Now, one of the things that's confusing for many of us non-diet experts on uh, risk factors is that the studies haven't all been consistent, at first blush anyway. So how is this low-carb diet different than the previous ones looking at the effects on lipid markers, and um, what do you think the main difference is? Yes. Well, that's a very good question. And if you look at you know, what, what we were kind of encourage people to go to, in our clinic every day is a Mediterranean diet. But basically it's uh, the two essentials are extra virgin olive oil and nuts, uh, eating more fruits, vegetables, legumes, a little bit of fish, maybe a little bit of white meat, poultry, and then cutting down on saturated animal fats, cutting down on dairy, uh, cutting down on certainly processed foods, ultra processed foods, and then cutting down on sugar like su sugar sweetened beverages. So in this diet, it was quite interesting. So the low carb diet, Paul, the low carb diet, high fat, mm -hmm. was the only group that got extra virgin olive oil. Mm. The low carb diet was the only group that got nuts. Mm. The low carb diet got more fresh vegetables. They only, and, but they did get butter, they did get milk, they did get red meat, and they got cheese. Mm. 
Now, when you think about, you know, a high fat diet, do you, how much red meat do you think of? Well, you know, usually a couple of big servings. Yeah. Right. Well, they got red meat. They got one ounce of red meat, hmm. one ounce a day. <laughs> they got butter one little over one teaspoon a day. Milk was a six ounce glass of, of 3%. And then the cheese, they had six dice of cheese. So about three ounces of cheese. Now let's look at the high carb group. What did they get? The high carb group got a lot more ultra processed foods. They were the only group to get processed rice, processed macaroni, processed fruit spread, you know, like a jam, and then a multi, multi grain instead of a, a whole wheat bread. They, they were the only one to get multi grain uh, bread. So it was a very different diet than what you would normally think you would eat if you're eating a high fat, you know, type diet. And so uh, I think that what this tells us is that the, you can eat a very high fat Mediterranean diet. In fact, Mediterranean is the second highest fat diet out there hmm. after the, you know, the high fat, the keto, those, those types of diets. Is it the f uh, fat and carb or is the, the processed foods, uh, can, is it possible to tease that apart, do you think? Yeah, that's a very good question. If you look back at Ansel Keys, you know, when he did the Seven Nation study decades ago, he really focused more on the saturated fat and a lot of the, you know, this is an NIH funded study. And so you can go back and look in the records. And I've done that and looked at the minutes of their meetings. And many of the, you know, the Italians, the Greeks said, Dr. Keyes, you know, we understand what you're saying about red meat, but you're ignoring the uh, monounsaturated fats that we eat, the olive oil, the nuts, things like that. We think it's more important to focus on that rather than focusing on the absence of red meat. So, and they didn't have a lot of processed foods, obviously, in that diet. So right. it really seemed to be more uh, the monounsaturated fats. And remember, extra virgin olive oil, Paul, is not pure. It has about 15% saturated fat in it. You know, there's no pure fat that we can really eat hardly. But uh, so there, if you put on top of this now ultra processed foods, which has a lot of calories in a small space, a lot of processed carbs and a lot of processed fat, that really makes the mix much worse. I see. Now, just to underscore, all three diets had the same overall caloric content, right? Yeah, there were 2,000 calorie diets a day after they had lost about 10, 15 percent of their weight. Yeah. Um, are all low carb diets the same? And, and is this a keto diet? Is this Dr. Atkins diet? Or what, explain to us the difference between those. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting, because uh, if you look at a keto diet, it's usually less than 10 percent carbs. You know, we as a species have eaten about 50, 55% carbs for hundreds of thousands of years. A low carb diet is usually less than 20% carbs. I see. It's very hard to stick with the keto. And that's where you really go into, you know, people check their urine and see if they have ketones in their urine and such. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions, really fascinating. And thank you for discussing this with me. The first one is the diets were applied after initial weight loss. You know, why is that important? And um, how do you think that impacts the study? Well, I think it, it, uh, these were a younger population. It was about 35 years old. These weren't hyperlipidemics. Their LDL was average. I wouldn't say normal, but average. I think the losing the weight uh, just helped even the playing field and get rid of some of the obesity issues that can occur. And they knew that as they go on, these, on a 2,000 calorie diet, they knew they were going to lose weight. And they didn't want that to kind of muddy the waters. I see. I see. Are there certain uh, patients or certain comorbidities that make you favor one diet over another one? Um, does the presence of diabetes make you want to say, gee, we should probably go with low carb or low fat or other uh, considerations? Yeah. yeah, that's been pushed a lot. The low carb diet has been pushed for diabetics. Yeah. And I think that on in first blush, you think, well, gosh, a diabetic eating all this meat and all this cheese and all this dairy. I think what this diet tells us, what this study tells us, is a, a low-carb diet would be very good for them, but it's a, it's a pretty specific low-carb diet. It's a healthy low-carb diet with more monounsaturated fats in it than what we normally think of. So the take-home message I'm getting is that the, to avoid heart uh, risk factors and to stay healthy, a Mediterranean diet that's uh, lower in carbs is a, a good diet for most people to consider. Fair summary? I that's exactly right. I would agree with that entirely. And remember, the Mediterranean diet is the second highest fat diet we have. 
It just has a lot of fresh fruits, vegetables, legumes, very little processed food. Uh, one other thing of interest was the you know the blood pressure went up in this in the uh, high carb group. Um, but I looked in the paper and I looked for the salt load and the sodium load. It's mm. interesting. They never use the word sodium in the whole paper. So mm. I assume there was a whole lot more salt in the high carb group because they got a lot more ultra processed foods. Well, it, it never ceases to amaze me just how complex this whole area is. And I really appreciate your simplifying it for us and, and helping me understand what a reasonable recommendation is for me and my patients. Steve, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Paul.